All righty, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. So I'm running a little bit late. I'm just trying to pull up the bias chart. Um, Stelios is out today. So, and um, uh, Greece is experiencing some pretty nasty heat. So um, Steve's having a little bit of uh, uh, electric issues there. So um, you have to bear with me today. When I say electric issues. Um, uh, Greece is not Greece is one of those countries that's not prepared on electrical grid to deal with as much um, air conditioning issues uh, or, or surges and you know air conditioning usage. So I think that's a, that's a big issue for Greece when they're basically are over 110 degrees or around 110 degrees, um, which it's pretty warm because that's you know basically what the temperature is here. But you know are we're, we're we're basically built for it where other countries are not you know what i mean so when you get these we, we we've been this way for months but you know some people or some places just aren't built for it so um trying to get the morning edge thing up okay okay so anyway, um, that that's kind of like the the issue right now with um, with with Greece. So let's get started with the analysis, um, and let's talk about the dollar yen, which has just slumped through the one hundred nine level. So that's uh, obviously a big deal. We can uh, we were talking about that. How I think the risk is that the dollar yen breaks lower. First level supports coming into play right here at 10865. I think we can get lower than that though. If if we continue to break lower, let's uh, I'm thinking channel support, but there's the 161% extension. Let's do this. Low, high. 78% retracement comes in at 108.35. That's really close to where channel support would be. <clears throat> so I'm going to write that down. So the dollar yen has broken lower. And um, really quick. So if you ask me, that's where the dollar yen looks like it's going to go. And then um, resistance right now, intraday. Well, I would be looking at this um, basically, and this is a four hour chart, but you can see these spike lows, right? This low right here and then those highs. So uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do something. I'm going to make that bigger, but... I'm not going to use it for right now. I'm going to actually delete that. I'm going to take this one and put it right here just to minimize all the drawings on the charts, right? And then you have this trend line, right? So that's going to coincide with basically 109.35. We shouldn't see above that now. You notice how I'm not going to put bearish. I know a lot of you are like, well, you know, hey, isn't that a bearish breakdown? It is intraday, but... I, I mean, the last couple months have been just one big, fat, nasty range. So, you know, you could think on an intraday basis, it's bearish, um, but just be careful, right? Um, just getting too aggressive down here, my opinion. I think intraday it's bearish, but you know it's more of just a range. That's why I don't want to be like um, super you know, aggressive, being on a short side trying to trade below a you know level support. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at some of the other majors. Um, here's the euro. So the euro knocking its head up against the one nineteen again, and then we know that one nineteen ten is big, right? I say big, meaning that 
it, it, if we break above that, we should we should start to retrace even further towards 120. Um, support, I think probably same as yesterday, 108.30. I said 108, 118, 30. See if that's the same that we wrote down yesterday. 119, well, that's it. And like I said, if you guys are just joining me, um, it's probably just me today. Dalian's bleeding lower, by the way. Uh, it's probably just me today. Stelios is out. He's got some friends visiting from London in town. And Steve is dealing with um, uh, issues um, with power issues. That's why I say electrical issues, it's power issues. You, um, Greece's power grids like flickering right now because of all the air conditioning units that are running. They're just not prepared for it. So. We run, we, we literally run air conditioning for like four months straight. I mean, where I live, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it, but we're built for it. Cable. All right. So um, Steve says he's on the webinar. Steve, do you really want to talk today? I think Steve misses talking. He said to me, sure thing. <laughs> okay. Support for the, Sterling is going to be here at the 38% retracement. You can see the spike low right here. Um, here, let me move this really quick. So you can see the, the, the spike high, spike low, 38% retracement comes in at 138 and a quarter. That's support right now. I have zero opinion about the Sterling right now, just so you guys know. I, like, I have no, no opinion about it. Uh, resistance is going to be 140, as you guys know, and I did, I don't know if there's anything to really do here. Raj asked, did Steve blow a fuse? He's got, I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. He's got like all these power generators and electrical sources i think he's got like a gerbil hamster wheel that's powering like his you know his xerox machine or something you know something like that he's got he's got some weird crap going on over there that's what that's what happens in ancient athens <laughs> welcome back to the stone age steve just kidding hey, look where I live, we have like third world internet. So I, I you know, um, I I cannot even talk. So as you guys know, the, this Aussie really is performing like crap on a stick. And I can tell you that uh, I'm a little frustrated that I got stopped out. It was a small position anyway. Literally, it's like, it was so small. It was like a third of my profits yesterday. I mean, that, that's how small the my, I was long pound Aussie, just so you guys know, it was just a small little sliver. And, you know, I wanted some exposure just in case, you know, the RBA did remove all of this taper and the Aussie went, you know, you know, went belly up anyway, didn't, um, but it's still trading like crap. And I, I have to say that this support right here at uh, 7330, it's got a hole. And this is 7420. That's significant. And while we're below that, we are bearish. There's just, there's no if and or buts with the Aussie. It is below this resistance. We have to stay bearish. Yes, we, well, I wouldn't even say we're back above that trend line because we're not. We're not. Okay, Kiwi. 618 still holding. I'm going to give it to just a little bit higher, guys. I'm going to give it to uh, 7030. Well, let's just call it 7040. Okay. Instead of 7020, which was the 618. I mean, we can write both, I guess. So 7020, 7040. That's channel resistance. It's a range. 
couldn't be much more of a range here, right? Support 69.40, right? Hey, I didn't have to, I, I don't have to, I'm telling you guys uh, to tell you guys because you guys are family. I didn't have, I didn't feel like the desire to tell everybody in uh, on, on the, on the face webinar today. Um, our uh, uh, um, neighbor and his two boys, they came over on Saturday because uh, his wife was out of town and um, uh, his youngest son tested positive for COVID yesterday. So um there's a chance that COVID is going to be making its way through my house in the next five to 10 days. Just got, giving you guys. You're vaccinated, kind of aren't you? All of you. Man. Uh, no, I'm vaccinated. The kids are not. Lisa? And my wife is not. Nope. Oh, she's not. Okay. Nope. nope. She is not. And uh, so just myself. But, um, but yeah, our kids are not either. No, okay. So it may make its way through our house. And um, yeah. Yeah, good, good luck with that, bro. I mean, uh, you shouldn't be worried personally yourself. Worst case scenario, you know, you're going to have a little bit of a flu since you're vaccinated. But, you know, the rest might get it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get it. I'm sure I'll get it. It's just, it, it'll be... Well, not necessarily. Back. Being vaccinated gives you a chance to not even get it at all. Even if the rest of the family does. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it, I, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I really, I'm just saying that I, you know, I might, might be a little sick for a couple of days. Just letting you guys know, uh, one is resistance, um, support for the dollar Canadian. It'll be, uh, one Oh, we, we have these, um, by the way, I just, I I'm just, I I'm thinking about this just because, um, I want you guys to 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 know this. If you, uh, how many of you guys live in the United States? Anyhow, don't get him in the mouth. In the mouth. No, we're not going to make out <laughs> until so, a few days have passed. <laughs> I um, there's this uh, there, there's this self test. I put this in our Skype for our, our team for the Forex Analytics team. This is. Um, this is a, a COVID um, test. It's a it's by Abbott Labs. This is uh, what I took yesterday. Um, their little home tests. Uh, my some of you know my um, my mother in law. She is a she's a family physician of like thirty five years. She does she administers COVID tests, you know, nasal COVID tests, um, and has been for the last you know year plus. Anyway, uh, she uh, she recommended I go get these. Um, they're uh, hold on, let me pull it up for you. Just if you were in they the US, decently you can get your hands on. for uh, they're decently inaccurate for uh, unsymptomatic patients. Yeah, I mean th this is um, uh, hold on, uh, sorry, asymptomatic. I meant. We took them yesterday, and they're good to have around. It's like. 25 bucks for um uh 25 bucks for for uh, two tests really yeah they're cheaper here yeah. they're like six euros it's oh well that's because they like to rake us over the coals here so th this is it's uh, if you guys have them it's binax binax now um so you guys, if you guys can get your hands on some, they're good. they they kind of go out here. They're harder to find here because people just swoop them up. So just in case, um, I just I wanted to mention that just because it was on my mind. Um, anyway, okay, going back to the chart. So look, the Canadian broke above that resistance we were talking about today um, at one twenty five and a quarter. So now we're up against channel resistance 38 percent retracement comes in at 125.70 125.70 range and support would be down here 
well, I don't even know if this flag is is uh, is is playing now, but it's you know I guess we should probably just note the the channel support, which comes in at one twenty four seventy. Okay, dollar Swiss man, this thing continues to drift lower. So this is channel support, and as you can see, the channel support, I mean. Maybe we did an overshoot or a throw over, possibly. Uh, but if you're looking at this whole move, the 78% retracing doesn't even come down till 90. So I have to write that. Uh, even though we could stop here, we could stop because of this channel resistance, but we'd have to get above this resistance now in order for the bearish pressure to take off, to be taken off which is 90.75. So while we're below that, uh, you know, I don't want to write bearish, but I, I, I do want to note that that, that that number needs to be taken out just in, in order to get, you know, a move back up towards, you know, 91 and a, and a, and, and a quarter just to get, get that downside pressure off. So if you guys are trying to play the Swissy, and you're like, well, I, I just want to play it as a squeeze. You, I think you can, but you want to play it above here. I don't know if buying it right now makes a lot of sense. You, you're in between fibs and you're, you're in a channel that's slightly breaking. So I don't know if it makes a lot of sense there. Uh, US dollar Norwegian Krona. I picked it up this morning again. Uh, hopefully you guys did too. Um, yeah, same as yesterday. 873 is big support. Resistance is 885. So 873 should be 873. I know I might have written 870 yesterday, but 885. And then if we get beyond that, for some reason, if this thing squeezes, because crude's weak, so you know we can't we can't ignore the fact that crude's weak. So I, I, I would think it'd be an AB equals CD type of move. So AB, oops, shoot, AB equals CD, uh, take us back to this resistance, which would be 890. If we did some simple move like that, I, I don't, I, I think that that's the risk because crude is so weak. Uh, it is bullish while we're above 870. You guys should know that. Dollar max, range bound. Um, I mean, we could write down 1970, but I almost need to write down 1980 now because this range continues to tighten, contract. Resistance 20, oops. Um, I'll just write down 20 again, then 2020, right? 2020, then 2025, which wherever the 200 day is, 200 day moving average is at, well, now it's at 2016. Um, I'll just write down the spike highs here at 2025, but just know the 200 day moving averages, um, the 200 day moving average is at 2016, just in case we get up there. I doubt we're getting up there today. Unless stocks roll over, um, I, I doubt it. Dollar yen. So we're trying to break. You know, we're bouncing back a little bit, but um, oh, we already we already wrote down dollar yen. Never mind. Uh, One hundred nine thirty-five. That's a big deal. Dollar index. Whole lot of nothing. So intraday, I mean, it looks like now we're starting to create higher lows. So just keep that in mind. Resistance is still right here at 92.35. I'm gonna argue that support is gonna be significant down here at 91. Let's just call it 9175, 9180, probably. Um, 
is now it's like looking very false breakdown ish, right? False breakdown below support, push back up, tried it again, not happening. I look at the euro just rolling over. Go Norway. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Okay, sorry. Um, no. 91. 75. Keep it in range for now. S&P, uh, as you guys know, this is really key. Given the fact that we keep failing up here, I am going to write down uh, 43.75, then wedge support, which will be down here. Let's just call it 43.15, 20. I don't know. Um, 43.20. Oops. 43.75. Significant. It's still bullish, guys, but... Um, you know, starting to risk a move lower. 44, 30, 44, 40, because that's 127% extension. This is 44, 30, right? 44, 40 is the 127% extension, just in case we turn around and break new highs. But I don't think that's the case today. Uh, 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 gold, silver. Okay, so gold, what I think is triangle support, I think, but the, the red, you know, it's, for, first, somebody asked me yesterday in the chat room if this is a double top. It's not a double top yet. It might be a double top soon. I would say if we, if we do this, This is our range, right? So this is probably good to, we could, we could say there's the triangle, but let's, let's just write down 1790 and 1835 because whatever happens here, if, if we press out of it, so for you guys at trade goal, we press out of it, there's your target. We press breakdown, that's where we go. So I, I think it's very clear here 1790, 1835, 1790, 1835, and it's in a range. And that's it. You just let, you know, let the range work, right? Let it, let it work. Um, I am gonna take a little bit of the US dollar Norwegian Krona off. I'm gonna take a third. Hold on really quick. I mean, Okay, I uh, just took a little bit of, no, I had to put it in the trades room really quick. Um, where am I at? What am I doing? Silver and Bitcoin. Okay, so silver channel resistance. This is, it's 26, but now it's 2590 because it is a descending trend line. So uh, 2590. And I, I still think that the, you know, these lows will be pretty well supported. So I think any dip down towards, um, 2450 should find buyers. I know channel support goes below that, but oops, did I just write that? I did 24, uh, Bitcoin. 
Uh, you guys know 42 5, 36 5. Okay. Nothing's changed here. Uh, e either I keep writing 42,000 or 42,500. So I don't know what I'm writing. So let's see. 42.5. Okay. So range, range, range. This is it. Okay. Stelios is out. So I need to take a picture of that. Um, Steve, how are you? Good morning. Welcome back. I know everybody's missed you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Or good afternoon where you for you and most everybody <laughs> else. Good afternoon. Um, yeah. So uh, I, Hey, you know what? I gotta, I gotta get these posts out on um, I, I gotta, I gotta update everything. So I'm gonna let you take over. But uh, guys, make sure you stick around. Steve hasn't been here for a while, so it's uh, it's it's good to have you back. Good to be back. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye bye, mate. Okay, let's see how we do this. Okay, new laptop computer. So, and you know, unfortunately, I have my other computer next to me, but I can't use it because we have constant power fluctuations. Uh, Pretty, pretty spectacular ones. I do use UPSs, uh, but they're so weird fluctuations um, that one of my UPSs goes bananas every time they happen. It's like power can fluctuate like three times within the same second. Um, yeah, so laptop is a safer solution to go. Anyhow, um, good to be back. I hope everybody's all right. Now, Blake and Ryan covered quite a lot of stuff during phase. Um, I'm going to go through the, you know, uh, you know, summarizing, you know, some some key points, and then we can go through, uh, you know, questions and looking specific markets. So, um, you know, uh, being absent one week, I, I can't really say it has, uh, you know, changed much having to do with risk assets, but it has. Uh, had, uh, you know, an impact on what's happening with the dollar. Specifically, if I am to start from the DXY, I have to note that we were monitoring this ascending wedge in the case of the DXY, um, which would either break lower or higher. Higher would, uh, as, I have said, as I had have said, uh, would push towards 94.50 to 95. Uh, that would probably be a terminal thrust. The break lower uh, put the index in danger of even having already found a high. Uh, now, the wedge's natural target is uh, back to its beginning, which is at 91.50, 200 DMA is 20 pips lower than that. So, yeah, I can't, uh, you know, exclude the probability of you know, finding some kind of a low there and then having one more push higher. But um, I have to say that my main case scenario has to stay with the overall trend, meaning I, I don't think we currently have very clear markets. That's more than obvious. But within that context, I, you know, I have to uh, keep my bias in being you know, bearish the dollar and bull bullish the indices until proven otherwise. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not surprised we broke down from this wedge and I'm not going to be surprised if we see, um, you know, even lower prices um, as long as, you know, this is happening. Now, we are having once again a period during which we're seeing, we, we, we saw that uh, during the past few months happening, you know, several times. It's, it's not a usual phenomenon, but it has become a little bit of a more usual one during the past few months uh, to seeing this divergence between yields and risk assets, meaning, uh, you know, Ryan and Blake talked about yields pushing lower, which is indeed the case, um, but indices are not following lower. So we, we are seeing this divergence in what, usually is a very decent correlation, you know, wherever, whichever direction yields are moving, um, the indices are moving as well. But now we're seeing the opposite. We have the indices at all-time highs, while the uh, yields are still uh, correcting lower, have moved, 
you know, rather significantly from the highs. In the case, for example, of the uh, 10 year, we had a, you know, the recent high was close to 180 and we're currently below 120. So that's a very, you know, decent uh, move in percentage terms. Um, uh, now, I, I don't think that can last, you know, for much longer, but that's not necessarily um, uh, a thesis for equities to, to move lower, right? I, I think that, um, and I agree with that, with what Ryan said earlier, I, I think that yields cannot keep on moving uh, lower for much longer under the current environment, despite being, you know, manipulated and all being with central bank being the main buyer in these markets. I still think that there is a limited downside uh, from where we currently are, a very limited downside, more likely than not. And, you know, risk reward clearly, clearly favors higher yields, meaning lower bonds. Um, now, in the case of the indices, as I said before, there is no reason for somebody to be bearish. The S&P still trades within, a, uh, you know, what can be an ascending wedge, which, you know, somebody can say that, you know, this is a terminal type of formation, but in any case, you know, you don't know how long it can keep unfolding. Um, the next upside target is almost 4,500, the 161.8% extension of the last corrective pullback that we had just before I left, we had like three, four uh, down days um, before we found uh, a low and kept moving higher. In the case of the NASDAQ, you know, nothing much different than that. I'm monitoring this channel. We've already surpassed the 161.8% extension of the previous ascending triangle. You know, who knows? We might be targeting the 200%, the 100% extension that is then uh, of the triangle at 15,600. And eight why not in any case some divergences left and right but you know is any of that enough you know to turn you berries uh, i think it isn't right now in the bearish dollar camp i also need to emphasize here that um the euro found support while i was away exactly at this triangle strand line support right so we we still maintain the possibility that this uh, whole move that started literally last summer can can still be, you know, a bigger corrective type of uh, move before we, uh, you know, resume the upside, which is also like a bearish dollar uh, technical interpretation, right? Um, in any case, we we're moving away from the trend line support. We've broken above this little descending wedge. Um, equivalently, we've broken above this descending wedge in the case of the cable, right? We have found the resistance for the time being at the 61.8, which is at 140, nice rounded level as well. Uh, but in all honesty, I think we, we might just be seeing a little corrective pullback before we push uh, higher here as well. Now, you know, clearly, if that's the case, there is a good case to be made that. Uh, gold and silver might also have bottomed out. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, admittedly, I'm not yet seeing technical indications that are, you know, this strong, right? Um, silver still contained within, you know, an equivalent type of triangle like the one we have in the Euro USD, right? And we're currently more or less in the middle of this triangle, which makes it, you know, very, very hard to have a, short-term bias in the, being in the middle of a long-term symmetrical triangle, right? It's, it looks more like a coin toss. And in the case of gold, admittedly, the recent rebound, which was capped at the 50% FIB, doesn't look impulsive for the time being. So, you know, contrary to what seems to be the case with other uh, type of dollar instruments, gold and silver still give me the uh, idea that we might need one more low before we can finally push higher, right? Of course, that might prove to be, you know, the wrong conclusion. We might like, you know, break this type of um, uh, corrective rebound and finally find some momentum and start accelerating higher. But un unless that happens, you know, this is what I see on the charts. Now, in the case of crude oil, 
this is the second consecutive um, decent down day that we seem to be having. So that makes me start looking at you know some other type of a corrective move unfolding here. Perhaps we are in some type of a triangle here as well, right? Like this. Um, so still unfolding in some kind of corrective move, but I think we need more price action to find out, right? Um, I don't think we've, ha we've found a major high though yet from what I'm seeing here. Um, I, I think there is a bigger likelihood that we're just in some kind of a corrective consolidation uh, more than anything. Now, um, natural gas, oppositely from uh, what crude oil is doing, seems to be in a much more bullish type of a short-term consolidation. I, I, you know, I left it as a symmetrical triangle in the making, and that's what seems to be the case, which you know tells me that the Path of least resistance remains higher, and you know there is a very good chance we're going to break higher. Having said that, we did make it to my target, which was the 161.8% extension at 4.1. Um, and you know it's interesting that we we've started consolidating after fulfilling that target. I, I do think that we have more upside to uh, to go though. Um, in any case, uh, now there is the case to be made that some of the dollar pairs, USD card being one of them, do not give a clear signal that we've um, we've actually had a high in the dollar, right? We have seen this pullback in USD card, which found support at the 50% fib of the, uh, you know, of the last move higher. Um, Another thing to be noted here is that the second leg higher in the USD CAD after the first leg higher that took us within this symmetrical triangle was, you know, perfect equality, right? As you see, quality target was here. And, you know, we reached that to the pip before starting pulling back. But, you know, this is what I had drawn some time ago. And, you know, so far it, it seems to have worked perfectly. But admittedly, there is a case to be made that we might be seeing like a, some kind of a corrective pennant here, which we might be breaking above from, right? So here's USD card, here's the, the USD knock, you know, a very, very, very similar type of situation, which put, you know, a little bit in doubt uh, that's why I said at the very beginning that, you know, um, I think markets are currently um, in murky waters, you know, a little bit hard to read with confidence um, because I see some uh, opposing signals, right? Uh, but within the context of uncertainty, which we're seeing probably due to summer conditions, etc., uh, I'm forced to revert as my primary bias to my, you know, medium to longer term bias, right? Which is bearish the dollar. Um, so I'm just, you know, reiterating this to, you know, decipher why exactly I, you know, I have this, this specific position. Now, here's the Aussie, which still remains under pressure. You know, there was a lot already said about the RBA, right? Here's the Kiwi, which looks less bearish, but on the other hand, considering the uh, considering the uh, change of stance from the RBNZ, somebody would have expected, you know, a much better reaction from the Kiwi to the upside than what we've seen already. So, you know, that can be some type of a bearish argument, right? The fact that we're seeing less of a reaction than somebody would assume so, you know, in the case of all these commodity currencies, you know, you have to respect the fact that it's not clear that they found a low yet. I mean, it, it, it might actually look a little bit more likely that they haven't. And this is another 
divergence with risk assets, right? We already talked about the divergence of yields with risk assets. So that's one thing to put on the side. And now the second one is the divergence of commodity currencies with risk assets. So the questions come, the question comes back to, you know, uh, something has to give. What is it going to be? Is it commodity currencies that are going to find a low somewhere here and push higher? Same with yields. Uh, or is it indices that will have to uh, completely run out of steam and finally produce a proper corrective move lower? Now, within this context of uncertainty, I'll have to again revert to reminding everybody that in general, being in the direction of the trend is a much better thesis uh, over time, right? Yes, if you are in the direction of the trend, there is going to be times that you're going to be uh, surprised because the trend breaks. But whenever we have an established trend, generally respecting the trend is a much more profitable approach to the markets than trying to fade uh, trend every single time there is some kind of, um, uh, you know, a pullback uh, in the opposite direction, right? So keep that in mind. Now, I've said since the very beginning of the summer that I do expect the summer months to produce some kind of a violent correction in stocks, but, you know, there's still a month to go, right? Um, and the violent corrective move might last just a week, right? Uh, although, you know, within a week, you can easily see a 10, 15% move lower. Keep that in mind. Uh, that's why I mentioned, you know, the potential of being a violent move. In any case, uh, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback as we speak in, uh, in equities, but in all honesty, you know, we're like at 43.77, the high was at... 44.30, so yeah, okay, we're like, one point two percent lower from the all time highs. Okay, yeah, whatever. Um, so, so yeah, that's a general recap of what I wanted to say. So I might as well open up the question box and see what you want to talk about. Give me a second. Okay, cool. Um, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, guys. No, haven't blown a fuse, but I have to say that the uh, power fluctuations are really trying their best. Um, NASDAQ coming down. Yeah, as I said, we, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback, but you know, I would want to see a lot more <laughs> before I become, uh, um, you know, bearish. Cut Pretty clear right now, oil down 2%. Yes, I agree. Use the CAD, use the knock. They look like they're breaking higher after a corrective pullback. I have to admit that. I mean, you know, I'm not denying this. And as long as crude is pulling back, which we're seeing a, a second consecutive, like strong down day to day in crude, you know, they have every reason to remain decently bid, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, I don't see the same type of um, behavior from. Uh, Euro pound and and some other assets though so you know I'm, I'm I'm monitoring this divergence and waiting to see. Okay, so let's see. Uh, SMH. Let's see what we have. Give me a second. Perfect. So SMH. Okay, let's extend a little bit trend lines. Once again, SMH, SMH at the precipice of a breakout, but still unconfirmed, right? I have to say that it, it really looks like it wants to break higher, right? It, it has wanted to break higher for you know, a long period of time, uh, but you know, hasn't happened yet. It, it is going around with the idea, but it, it has done so before. Right. So wait a little bit longer until we get some confirmation. It might even be within the next couple of days. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, we haven't broken out yet. So, you know, nothing has really changed. ARC. Yeah, last time we had a look at it. 
we were there. I said that this is probably some type of a corrective rebound that should push lower. Now we've unfolded some kind of a little triangle here. But most likely it doesn't change that much. That's what I think is happening here, most likely. They're not. IWO, IWO. Nothing has changed here either. Still within some type of a prolonged consolidation, still haven't broken higher or lower. I think you need to remain more patient here. Uh, probably breaking out the upside uh, sooner rather than later, but it's not about to do so as we speak. And ARC G, we haven't had a look at this before from what I see. ARC Genomic Revolution ETF. Okay. Hooey. Let's see what we have here. Okay, that was an easy move, right? So we had this leg lower. We had this nice symmetrical triangle. We should have expected another leg lower, which we did get. We didn't reach, I don't even need to extend this. We didn't reach equality target. That's more than clear that we didn't, but we still you know, produced a lower low, which was the minimum expectation. The question is, have we bottomed out yet? And the answer is that I have no clue. I think we need more price action to be able to say something with a little bit more confidence because you know there is a very good case to be made that we're still within some larger consolidation here, right? You can sit here a more complex one, which you know might require another low. In any case, what's this trend line resistance, right? As an important indication. Also notice that RSI is mid-range. So basically the RSI is also showing us indecision. There is no momentum here in one direction or the other. So bottom line, I have very good clarity about one thing having to do with this market, that it's a market that you shouldn't be trading as we speak, right? It's a decent one to monitor, a little bit longer because you know eventually it has a very decent chance to break higher and continue but looking at it as we speak i wouldn't really be doing anything with it right i, I would just keep having a look at it like once every day or two and until you know something has really started happening from you know technical uh, perspective s e d g s e d g Okay, uh, last time I was here and we had a look at it. We already had this corrective move lower. We broke higher. I said that this pullback looks to be a bull flag. The bull flag lasted a little bit longer. And look at this runaway uh, gap, most likely, right? This breakout that came in with earnings. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say here is that you should definitely respect this breakout and not fade it. I think we're headed higher. All indications or technical indications point higher here. And I think we're headed higher and I think we're most probably going to be testing the all-time highs from what I see here, right? And probably even higher from that. Tesla. Tesla. Okay, last time we had a look at it, from what I see, we were there. So I said perhaps higher towards this zone, and we have been creeping higher. Uh, nothing has really changed here, really. Nothing. We've broken above this trend line resistance. So that's definitely some kind of a bullish development. We created another consolidation here. We, we're breaking higher from that as well. Uh, yeah, 780. Look look for 780 and let's see what happens from there. I would be, I would be cautiously bullish here, you know, if I had to 
characterize my thesis by purely based on on sorry on technicals, right? Not fundamentals. Yeah, I would be conservatively conservatively bullish here and cautiously bullish because you know I don't see such an inspiring momentum. That's why I'm saying, you know, uh, cautiously bullish, right? I, I would have liked to see like more enthusiasm once we broke through this trend line resistance. But nevertheless, we do have a breakout and we do have this market, you know, moving higher, right? So um, we might have even created some kind of a double bottom. So, uh, you know, uh, I think that, you know, if you have to be bearish or bullish, you have to be bullish here, right? I wouldn't be buying it, but if I had to be either buy it or, uh, buying it or selling it, I would be buying it. Okay. Anything else, guys, girls, before we uh, call it a day? ZM. ZM. Testing again this trend line resistance, right? Uh, has broken above this potential descending triangle. So that's definitely a very solid breakout. Let's see if we can get the second breakout from this trend line, right? From there. Uh, yeah, I th but I don't think you can really be bearish. Right. I don't think you can be bearish. I'm not saying that there is no bearish possibilities here. There are, but, you know, we had a strong move higher. We broke through this. And we now seem to be more in some kind of a corrective consolidation. I think we break through this trend line resistance as well. Then the next natural target is roughly at 445. So there is, you know, a decent upside from there. GMDA, what the hell is this? Ah, we've seen it before for some reason. GMDA, this looks so messed up. Gamida cell, okay. No idea what this is. Okay, so we've broken through this trend line support. That's definitely a best development. We've created a lower low in uh, the RSI and also seen oversold territory. That's also not a really uh, good outcome for the bulls. Yeah, I don't really see the bullish argument here. I have to tell you that much, right? I don't see technically the bullish argument here. So I think you have to keep looking lower towards four. Right, towards four dollars, whatever it is, whatever this is listed. Yeah, that's what I think about it. Need to get FTA in 10th of August. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I take your word for it, my friend. Uh, technically speaking, though, there is nothing bullish with this at, as we speak, right? There is not, no bullish interpretation looking at this chart as we speak, right? Everything points lower. I'll need to to see like a very decent reversal type of event uh, to start even considering the possibility of upside here. Laura says, NVAX, NVAX. Okay, NVAX has created a nice rectangle here, all right? So there you go. These are your levels, meaning break below 166, look for 94. Break above 231, look for 300 and change, right? Um, which side would I favor? Probably the upside, uh, looking at the bigger picture, right? But in any case, this is a rectangle. It's a very easy type of formation to trade, you know, you break through the lower bound, look for an extension equal with the width of the formation, you break through the upper bound, uh, the exact opposite, look for an extension equal of the, with the width of the formation to the upside, as simple as that. Uh, currently, you know, waiting and 
uh, being patient is probably the way to go. Uh, by the way, speaking of which, the 200 daily moving average also um, confluences with the lower bound. So, uh, you know, that area there is is quite a nice solid area of support at 160, what the hell is it, 167, whatever it is. So, you know, somebody that would want to be a little bit more aggress aggressive with trading this, and especially since we're talking about an actual company, if you also have some kind of fundamental uh, thesis that makes you bullish with it, then I would add to this that you might even want to try your luck buying this while within the rectangle being closer to the lower bound of it uh, and having a you know rather limited risk of downside so you know if, if you want to jump the gun and you're bullish fundamentally technically speaking you can even you know buy against that lower bound the confluence of supports at 167 all right so that's also a viable option as long as you you know, as long as you are um, um, let's say um, good enough with your risk management to uh, you know abide to the rules of this trade, right? Uh, I'm saying that because I've seen many times people that are bullish something, you know they keep shifting the bar, you know once once their risk has been breached, they're trying to find the next level they they're willing to tolerate price going to before they can abandon their position and then the next one and then the next one right so you know please make sure you're not going to do this uh last but not least natural gas which we did cover my friends a few minutes ago i did cover natural gas uh exactly after crude oil I didn't mention natural gas. I did mention that it did hit the target we had for quite some time, the 161.8% uh, FIB extension at 4.1. And I also mentioned that what I've seen unfold since then looks to me a very, very corrective symmetrical triangle, meaning I think there is a much, much higher probability to see a bullish breakout in this case than anything else. Once that happens, we can start talking about potential upside targets, but I have to tell you that I think we can make it to this previous high, which is what, 485, 488, whatever it is, right? So I think we're in some kind of a bullish consolidation as we speak, and we might break higher any 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 day, right? Any day. Okay, guys and girls, uh, nice being back with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as well, and uh, have. A nice rest of the day. Don't forget, Blake has the daily roundup in two hours and 15 minutes from now. Uh, you should join him there for a short recap of what has transpired during the day until that point. And I'll see you again tomorrow.